Hello, this video is for taking apart a Colt double action revolver, in this case, a Colt Official Police 38 Special, unloaded as you see. Uh, th it's, this video should be good for any Colt double action revolver, whether it's this, a Detective Special, a Python, uh, a Trooper. Uh, these are excellent guns. They were carried by policemen in the United States for many, many decades. Uh, it's good for carrying in the woods, defensive carry, uh, shooter. It's just a fine weapon. It's probably one of my favorite guns in my collection, if not the favorite. Uh, in order to do this, you will need a screwdriver, plural. Uh, this is a screwdriver kit that you could buy at, let me straighten this a little, there we go. You can buy this at uh, Walmart, Academy, uh, Brownells, Midway Online uh, for about $10 more or less. Uh, they come with many different little heads and you'll want to find the correct head to, that fits these screws on your gun. Uh, also that's going to be useful is, uh, as you get into this, is uh, this was recommended to me many years ago and I'm so glad I have it. It's uh, Colt Double Action Revolvers, a shop manual by Jerry Kunhusen or Kunhausen. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce his name and if I'm mispronouncing it I apologize in advance to him and his family and uh, to you gunsmiths out there there's his name who use him uh, let's see this this old southern boy may be mispronouncing this name uh, you should hear how my last name gets used and abused so anyway uh, this is an excellent book with a lot of good material and history about the gun and about about these Colt revolvers and their parts and how they function and uh, a little bit of history about the gun. Uh, very interesting uh, and, and very handy to have for doing things like this. Uh, in order to do any kind of work on a Colt revolver, uh, well, frankly a lot of guns out there these days, Smith and Wessons, but uh, particularly Colts, uh, you can't just send it to any old gunsmith and you certainly don't want to try working on it yourself. I learned that the hard way many years ago. Uh, it's uh, something. Uh, it's 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 a very it's not delicate, but it is a little more complicated than certain other other guns. And there are only a handful of gunsmiths that I personally know of in the country that can handle them. So always make sure it's a gunsmith you trust, and make sure he does know how to handle Colts. And as Mr. Kunhusen says, this used to, it used to be, a, it's not really complicated. He says it's not really complicated. It's something that all gunsmiths used to know. And I've read accounts of policemen that could, you know, work, could polish their own action and, and do an action job on their own gun if they really knew what they were doing. But they're just, most gunsmiths do not know how to handle this. And the dangerous part is there are many that think they do. And you just got to watch yourself. But uh, there are there are sources out there that do know how to handle these and they do a good job. But there are some things that, that you can do at home. And uh, you, you can take this gun apart. You can clean it. Uh, you can even adjust the bolt drop. And when I say bolt drop, I'm talking about this little piece here. This little deal sticking up here. That's called the bolt. And... I don't know if you can see it in the video, that will drop as the cylinder rolls. Boom, there it goes. You can adjust that drop if the gun is giving you trouble, if it's if, if the bolt is not catching on time during action. That doesn't happen often, but it can depending on the condition of the gun, what's happened to it in the past. But uh, for whatever reason, you can adjust that. You can, you can change the mainspring of the gun out. That's very easy to do. Um, and just basic cleaning. So let's get started. Here we go. Let's take start by taking the grips off. Take the cylinder off. Whoop. 
by the way, if make sure you have a wide working space, a, a desk to put put all these parts, so you don't get anything on the floor. Because uh, some of these parts, if they fall on the floor, they will have a hard time finding them. Uh, now that this that's going to happen here, I'm not planning on it, but it's good to have a magnet. It's I'm not sure what you call it exactly, but it's a long handle. Uh, about half the length of a broomstick that has a magnet on the end that you can walk across the room with and kind of like you're sweeping a minefield, a mine detector. And it'll pick up little parts and springs and junk that your little, your human eyes just won't always see. So that's handy to have around. Let's see. There it goes. There we go. Let's see. This next part is very important. I'll explain that in a minute as soon as I get these screws off. Okay, now, when you're taking this side plate off, you'll see the outline here around the gun where it comes off. When you're taking that off, do not try to pry it off. Because if you bend anything in here, you risk hurting the function of the gun, the, the, the action cycle. And bending the plate, it just, it's, it was, I was told to me early on, for, fortunately, uh, I didn't learn it the hard way, but for many years I'd try to pry this thing off and I'd get, get away with it. Nothing would happen, but and you may get away with it, you know, the first couple of times, but if, if you do bend something here, you're in trouble. And so just do not, do not try to pry this plate off. Instead, take something that will not damage the frame, like a rubber, like this, this is, this handle is made of rubber or a wooden coat hanger and tap it. Just tap the side of the frame right here. That piece just popped off there. It's all right. I think it's loose. Let's see. There it goes. The vibration of that tapping will shake the plate loose. So there you see the inside of the gun, the guts as I call it. Let's see. Now, take the mainspring out. And a lot of people recommend, including Mr. Kuhnhausen, recommend using these to pick the uh, spring out. I don't ever bother with it. Now, there are some guns uh, that you will need that on, at, I mean, depending on the spring, depending on the type of gun. Uh, my Detective Special, for instance, is a very tight spring, and I just I can't do it without, without these, these bent nose pliers. But in this case, all I do is this. Stick my finger in there, move the deal aside to unlatch it, pull it on out. Done. Now, uh, often you can, this this pin here or the rebound lever can often just be pushed out, depending on how loose it is, like right there, boom. But sometimes they're a little tight, depending on when it was installed if you've never done it before so you might need to get a punch like this to just to push it on out tap it out so it's good to have th these punches around as well and there and there are other little pins in here too for adjustment if you want to for so a good punch is always good to have with these so okay so the rebound lever comes out the hand comes out the hammer comes out trigger comes out and these little deals hanging off here, if they drop off, don't worry about it. You can reattach them. This comes out. And there we are. It's good. And you can clean it, whatever. Now, this piece here, I'm not going to take it out because it's not, uh, it's, it's a little too much trouble to get back in. Don't take it out if you don't have to. But there is a reason for taking this out. This is the bolt and the tang on the end or the tail. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can adjust the bolt. You can adjust the bolt drop, but 
uh, do not do it. Do not adjust anything until you take this out first. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to do it. You just unscrew the screw, slip the screwdriver head under here and push it out and catch it. Don't have a finger here or something so it doesn't bounce out into spring out into who knows where land. Um, but once you take this out to, to adjust the bolt drop, you'll take a set of pliers and gently, I can't emphasize the word gently enough, and don't do it while it's in the gun. Do it while it's unscrewed and you're taking it out and you're holding it. And bend it just a little bit, one way or the other, depending on how you want to adjust the bolt drop. Again, do not, don't jerk it around. Don't be brutal. Be very, very gentle. Just, just kind of feel your way through it is the best way I can describe it. When you're bending this tail one way or the other. Because when it bends... It'll affect when it when this rebound lever releases it. Oops, excuse me. So uh, now we're going to put it back together. My original reason for doing this, I did this yesterday actually, and it didn't work. This is just a little, another little commentary. I was going to replace this pre-war, excuse me, post-war hammer with a flat spur. That was common in post-war guns. Post-war meaning after World War II, more or less. Uh, Pre-war me meaning before 1945, World War, World War II, as a reference point. Uh, I, I like the post-war ones better. Excuse me. Here I go again. I like the pre-war hammers better, personally. And I wanted to try to install it in this frame, replacing this, just to see what it was like. And I took this pin out and replaced it here and... You know, worked with a little bit, uh, but then I realized, and n not all parts fit. I mean, the, 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 each most of these parts I understand were fitted for the particular gun in which they were installed. So this uh, hammer will not fit on this stump or peg the, on the hammer rolling peg. And maybe that's not the correct terminology, but uh, the, this hole is just a little too narrow compared to the other hammer. Now, I don't see why a gunsmith who knew what he was doing couldn't widen this hole a little to be able to insert it. But uh, again, emphasis on gunsmith who knows what he's doing. Uh, but that's beyond my capabilities. So I'm going to put that aside for another day and just put the gun back together. Uh, so, okay, here we go. First, we start with this. this oh. there it goes see now we do a hammer slide the hammer in And we do the rebound lever. Stick that pin back in. There it goes. We do the hand. Stick it on there. Let's see. Now what I just did there is I made sure the rebound lever end is inserted in a little slot here with the hand and because otherwise it'll be binding up against the side of the plate it won't, be, it won't really be in all the way so just always keep that in mind because it's easy to miss when you do this the first few times you slide the mainspring back on easy to do whoop There it goes. Back on. And if you get the mainspring back on and you find out this is not correct, all you that that the that the hand is not all the way in, you can just slip the head of the screwdriver in here under the rebound lever and just twist it a little. It'll lift it a little. Don't again, don't pry stuff around. Just slip it in here and gently lift it. And just push the hand on all the way in. So everything's in place there. 
Um, let's work on getting the plate back on. Here's the spring for the release, the cylinder latch. Insert that back in. And always make sure that this hole is lined up with this. All right, there we go. See, there we go. Now we put the screws back in. Here. Okay, now to get the crane back on, take this little head, start the spring in here, over. Well, screw this back in. Whoops, I just did a little something wrong. No big deal. I forgot to put the, the crane back in. I wouldn't be able to get it back in if I screwed this all the way in. Just... Back this out a little. Come on. There it is. Okay, now I'll start this back in. Okay. That little head holds the crane in place. Okay. Now for the last part, put the grips back on. Tighten it. By the way, when you're particularly with these wooden grips, new or old, do not over tighten them because the stress can cause the inside wall of the grip to cave in on, on itself as the as the screw pulls it inward. So don't overdo it. Or you could get some kind something to some kind of a plastic tube or something to put in there to kind of brace it. I did that on one of my other guns, but I'll, maybe I'll show you that in another video. Anyway, there we are. The Colt Official Police. Everything's working good. Fine weapon. Very easy to take apart. Uh, if you know what you're doing, a uh, little bit of practice. It's kind of fun, actually. I enjoy doing it. Uh, hope this video has been helpful to you and gunsmiths uh, or anybody feel free to comment critique uh, just keep language civil I welcome your commentary if you see me done something doing something wrong please let me know uh, thank you for watching otherwise